Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris FX, and I'm excited in this lesson to talk to you about the updates to Primat Studio as well as the new spill remover effect included in the 2019.5 update to Boris Continuum Complete. Now I know you're probably expecting to see our very cool futuristic space-like key right off the bat, but instead I want to talk about Bob the Mime. Now, Bob has a bit of a problem. Now, Bob was delivered to me as an actual matte key element with the key channel included. And I've just taken Bob and basically just keyed him over this background here. Now, if you take a look at Bob, these are actually the exact same shots of Bob. When Bob's on top of this colorful foreground, Bob looks okay. But if you take a look at Bob over here on the left side, Bob's looking a little bit unwell, a little bit green. Maybe he's got a little bit of the spill from the green screen that's going over top of him. And what I'd like to do is like to show you how we can quickly and easily remove that using the new spill remover effect inside of BCC 12.5. So what we're gonna do is head to the effects palette. I'm gonna type in spill. You'll see it is part of the key and blend category right here. I'm simply gonna take that. I'm gonna drag it and drop it right down here onto the mime with spill layer. And as soon as I let go, you'll notice the background disappears, everything turns white. What exactly is going on here? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to single composer window because we are working with effects in this lesson. It's much easier to work like this. Next thing I'm going to do is step into effects mode. Let me just zoom back just a little bit here. There we go. Very nice. Now, what exactly is going on here? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that when you take a BCC effect and you drag it and you drop it onto an effect like what we have here or a title, BCC wants to apply that to the mat or the title. The only catch is you actually have to tell it that that's what we're going to do. I'm simply going to navigate over to the effects editor, come right down here to the title and mat category, and I'm going to apply this to the title dash mat. Now you're probably looking at this going, well, Kev, it looks pretty much the same. So what exactly has changed? Well, let me show you. I'm just going to zoom in here. We'll just move Bob the Mime over here. And I want you to take a look at what happens when I bypass the effect. You see the amount of green? And it's actually the amount of green in not only Bob's face, but Bob's hat as well. Take a look at the difference. Okay. Now something else is going on here. You'll notice that as I bypass the effect, I get a lot of detail happening in the background. And as I apply the effect, a lot of that detail disappears. Well, what exactly is going on here? Well, to be honest, I haven't really looked at what the video levels are of my background here, but I can tell that they are outside of legal range. How do I know that? Because if I navigate over here into the general controls section of the spill remover effect and I toggle safe levels off, you'll now see I get all of that detail back. So I'm simply going to leave safe levels turned off. Now when I bypass, you'll see Lots of green, looking a little bit more like it should. Now, I do also want to point out here that I am working in the, I'll call it the simplified version of the effect. We're working in the channel limit removal method where we can simply get in, choose the screen type that we're working with, adjust the amount of bias we want to have added. I'm just going to zoom back just a little bit here and just reposition Bob. You'll see he's a little bit on the red side here. So let's just take his sunburn away just a little bit to right about there. And what we now have is a lot less sickly looking Bob and a lot more human looking Bob. And Bob is looking very, very good right now. Now I did say this was the simplified version of the effect. We do have the ability to come to the removal method, drop that down and switch to classic continuum mode where we can get in and eye drop the screen color as well as get in and adjust the ratio, the tone mix and the tone range. But to be honest, a lot of the work you're gonna do with this effect will be with the channel limit parameter turned on and you can see Bob's looking fantastic and he's ready to go back to Paris where he started. All right. Now let me just close the effect editor here and I'm just going to toggle back to my bins because I want to come to my space key here. Now what I've done with my space key here is that I've actually layered the effect. So I have the background element here. Then I have my operator with his green screen. I have my fast film glow and I have my fast film process. So let's go through how we created this composite. Now I just want to pause for one quick second to give a big thank you to edit stock for the use of our futuristic green screen guy in this lesson.
now. I'm not going to worry too much about this timeline that we're working in now because I have created another timeline for us to start with to get rolling. And that is our space key from scratch. So here we go. There's our talent. He is sitting in front of the background that we want to put him on. And we're simply going to hit Command or Control and 8 again to call up our effects palette here. Let's now type in Primat. There's our Primat Studio. I'm simply going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto our shot. Now you'll notice that once it's there, I'm going to step into effects mode. I am going to switch out of dual display because it's so helpful and so useful to work like this when we have the Primat Studio UI over here on the left hand side we have a single window for us to do all of our compositing, keen work, etc, etc. It's just a much easier way to work. Now before I get rolling with the actual key itself, I'm going to want to do a little bit of garbage matting because you'll notice we got a lot of green in here. Green that we shouldn't have to worry about Primat having to deal with because to be honest, I don't want to have to clean up all this. I'd really only rather worry about keying or cleaning up right around our talent here. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, there's a couple ways that we can do this. The first way that we can do this is by doing a simple crop. Now, to be honest, if I crop it over to about here, I still have all of this area in here to worry about. So I'm going to create a simple mocha mask. So let's head over to our effects editor and I'm going to come down to the outside mask parameter. I'm going to switch this to be the mocha mask. Now once I select that, nothing happens, but I will launch mocha. Let's just hold Z on the keyboard to zoom back on our canvas. And all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to grab the X-spline tool and I'm just going to draw a very rough shape because this is a garbage mat around our talent kind of like that. Now the only thing we really need to check on is that he doesn't go anywhere outside of our garbage mat. And I'm just going to make manual adjustments to the actual garbage mat itself. There's actually no tracking required. There we go. And let's just check back at the beginning here. He's looking pretty good. All right, perfect. All I'm going to do now is simply close Mocha. I'm going to save it. And you'll notice that as soon as I save, our talent immediately disappears and all we have is the green screen. So what's happened here? Well, all we really need to do is to simply head on over here to the outside mask parameter. I'm just going to invert that key. And now you'll notice it's going to be a lot easier for us, and more so Primat Studio, to only have to worry about the green screen that's directly around our talent and not have to worry about all this mess out here that we're inevitably going to have to clean up later. So let's get in, let's do the key. A couple ways that we can do this. There's the the I have to do the work method, and there's the let's let Primat Studio do the work method. So let's have Primat Studio do the work by simply having me auto analyze our green screen, and you'll see this is looking pretty darn good. Most people might think that we're good to go, except we got a little bit of a mess going on down here. So let's see what's happening. Most people immediately jump to the final mat and they say, oh, well, that's great. Look at this right down here. That's all we have to worry about. But what you should actually do before you head right on over to the final mat is check the mat status. Okay, now you'll see, got a little bit of a mess going on over here, a little bit of a mess going on down here, a little bit of a mess going on inside of him. So what exactly does the mat status window represent? Well, we have our three shades here. We have black, gray, and white. Black represents transparent. Anything that's black is 100% transparent. White is 100% opaque meaning we cannot see through it. Gray means there is some transparency going on there, so you need to be made aware of it. So let's get in, let's clean this up. Now for me, I like working with the rectangle tool. I'm simply going to draw a rectangular shape around that gray like this, right down here to the bottom. Same thing over here on the right hand side, very nice. And now I can clean up the foreground inside of our mat like such. And you'll see if we jump down here, that's looking pretty good. There's a couple little blips in here, but to be honest, I'm not going to go in and worry about all of this. You get the idea of how this works. You're obviously going to want to put in as much work as you need to put in to get your mat looking exactly the way you need it to. Ours is looking pretty darn good right here. Now, one other thing that I do want to point out before I go any further, which is depending on what's happening in your actual opaque area, you might want to get in and add an inside mask as well. What the inside mask does is essentially like the outside mask, it lets us define an area that will not be impacted by our key at all. Now, I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So I don't necessarily need to get in and do that, but keep that in mind when you're working. Inside mask, exactly the same as the outside mask, except it's going to let us define 
what we don't want to have impacted by the Primat Studio Keyer. Now, before we go on, I do want to mention something that's going to bring us right back to the start of this tutorial where we talked about the spill remover effect that's been added in 2019.5 of BCC. Well, not only has that effect been added, but if you take a look over here inside of your Primat Studio parameters, you'll actually see that we have the same effect that's been included now and added to the Primat Studio effect. So this way you don't need to worry about adding it as a secondary effect. You can do all of your spill removal work right here from within the effect, utilizing all of the same parameters you have access to in the standalone effect. Now at this point, I'm actually fairly happy with this and I think that we're gonna be good to go. Now, we do have the ability to get in and add a light wrap parameter as well. Light wrap, a fairly common real world situation, bright light in front of somebody, if you're standing behind them looking at them, you'll notice that the light appears to almost wrap itself right around the edges of the person. In this case, I'm actually gonna simulate that over here using the fast film glow. So let me show you how this is gonna work. I'm just gonna step out of effects mode just to head back into the timeline here. I'm gonna switch back to my bin view here. And right now, I could take the effects and start option or alt dragging them on top of each other. But for me to show it to you, it's just easier for me to apply these effects to different layers. What we're gonna do is call up our effects palette again, command or control and eight. Let's come in here, let's just type in fast film. I'm gonna have a couple fast films in here. Let's actually make sure we spell that correctly here. There we go, fast film glow, which is right here. We're gonna take it, drag it and drop it right here like such. Now you'll see it kind of glows everything out, which is not quite what we're looking for. So let's step back into effects mode. And what I want to do is I'm going to come down to our geometrics and I'm actually just going to crop this to the left to about there. And then we're going to give it a blend like such. So all of the glow is happening over here on the right hand side and seemingly wrapping around our talent. Now, one last thing command or control and Y on the keyboard. We're gonna add another layer. Let's head back up to our fast film, in this case, process, drag and drop. Now, one thing that I love about fast film process is that it has a ton of presets, which is what we're gonna utilize right here. I'm simply gonna navigate up here to the preset dropdown. I'm gonna come down and choose a blue wash, just like this, and you'll now see that what we have is a very futuristic look that we created utilizing three effects inside of BCC and the power of Primat Studio. Now, don't forget if you subscribe to BCC, you can download the 2019.5 update absolutely free right now. And for more great training, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.